In this video, I will show you the example of cruise control in a car to illustrate how a PID controller works. Let's say that we have a car that is going at 50 km per hour, but we want it to go at 80 km per hour. So 80 km per hour is our new target. At the beginning, there is a big error between the actual speed and the desired value. A controller acts on this error to regulate the fuel in the car and bring the speed as close as possible to the target value. If we have only a proportional controller, the output will be proportional to the error. So at the beginning, the error is big, the output is also big and the speed will increase. As the speed increases, the error decreases. So the speed will now increase more slowly and more slowly as it gets closer to the target value and the error gets closer to zero. Eventually, we will see that the speed stops increasing and we can observe an error, a steady state. That's because uh, for the output to be non-zero, the error must be non-zero. So for, uh, with a proportional controller, there will always be an error city state to keep the output different from zero. The bigger is the gain K, the smaller is the city state error. Let's see now what happens if we add an integral term. Now the output is the contribution of two terms. One is proportional to the error and one is proportional to its integral over time, which can be seen as the area below the error. Since we have the contribution of the error and its area, the output at the beginning is higher, so the speed will increase much faster. As the error decreases, the speed, the area will keep increasing, so the speed will go up until it even crosses the target value. Now the error is negative, so the proportional term will act to bring the speed back down, but it will take few oscillations before it stabilizes at the target value because of the contribution of the integral term, which makes the controller more aggressive. We can notice that there is no steady state error this time because even if the error is zero, the sum of the area is non zero. So the output is non zero because of the contribution of the integral term. If we now add a derivative term, we will have a contribution that is proportional to the change of the error over time. Now we have what is called a PID, Proportional Integral Derivative Controller. As the error becomes smaller, the derivative is negative. So it adds a contribution that is opposite to what the proportional and the integral terms are doing. The speed goes up more gradually and it will take just few oscillations before it stabilizes um, at the target value. That's because the derivative detects the change in slope of the error that would cause oscillations and counteracts the integral term. This is what is called set point tracking. But let's see now another example. Let's say now that the car is moving at the desired speed, but the road suddenly goes uphill. If you are driving and you keep the same pressure on the pedal, the speed will naturally go down. The road here acts as an external disturbance, so this problem is known as disturbance rejection. There is a difference from the previous case of set point tracking. While before the error was very big at the beginning and then decreases, now the error starts from zero and then it increases. If we have a proportional controller and the gain is small, it will take some time before the error is big enough to actually make a difference in the control action. 
so the control will be very slow. On the other hand, if we have a higher gain, that will translate to a more aggressive control action at the beginning, which will cause the system to overshoot. As soon as the controller detects a negative error, it will act again quite sharply to bring the car back. So we will see a lot of oscillation. While it is possible to obtain a reasonable trade-off with a proportional controller for set point tracking, it is very hard to have good disturbance rejection with a proportional only. But if we add an integral term to have a faster response when the error is small and a derivative to reduce oscillations, we can expect a response like this with a small overshoot and a quick assessment. This was the example of disturbance rejection for cruise control.